Day two at Bio began with a keynote from Robin Roberts, who told us her story, discussed the necessity of bringing diverse voices to the table, and reminded us of the importance of the patient perspective. We're taking on the toughest issues out there. We're fighting epidemics. We're fighting medical crisis. We need as many people in the room discussing how can we address this, how can we fight this, and how can we change this. And the only way to do that is to have an inclusive environment in biotech and life sciences. My name is Ashanti De Silva, and I'm the first patient to ever receive gene therapy in the world. I advocate a lot for receiving the care that we deserve and that we need, and making sure all stakeholders involved in rare disease are continuing with us, not only from drug development, but past that as well. And the exhibit hall opened this morning with over 1,800 exhibitors from all over the world. We do a video collaboration tool over smart glasses. It's a see what I see solution. So if somebody in the field needs assistance, they put on the glasses, connect to somebody anywhere in the world. I'm now able to see through the glasses, but then there's like a section of the glasses where I'm also seeing the document that he just sent me. That's actually really cool. You've got on the stump and you've got muscle movement in your arms. So there's like a sensor sort of sleeve that goes on and then it actually picks up the movement of the, the muscle tension, which then actually allows you to control the fingers and they train it to move in the way that they want to. So they learn how to reuse their hand. Education sessions continued, including an interactive round table with the FDA. It was an excellent panel. It featured Janet Woodcock of Cedar and Peter Marks of CBER. So they really represent most of the drugs, uh, whether they be biologics or cell therapy or small molecules going through the Food and Drug Administration. State governors met to discuss how they're working in their own states to treat opioid addiction. 115 or so people a day are dying of opioid overdose deaths. We have a lot of work to do and it requires effectively rewiring the way communities and treatment centers and healthcare providers and criminal justice all interact in the community. For the first time in over a decade, we've seen a decline in the number of deaths associated with opioids, and we're seeing all that happen in partnership with our medical community and our drug companies that are introducing treatments and therapies and medicines to really help people overcome these serious addictions. Today is Food, Health, and Environmental Future Day, which is dedicated to the proposition that biology is showing the way to the future of food and health innovation. The evening came to a festive close with the exhibitor hospitality receptions where we got to experience a little of what makes each pavilion unique. I think it's amazing they have all kind of uh, different things so it's pretty nice to go around and look what they have. We had a very busy day in the booth and I can't complain I think it was very much worthwhile. We uh, we're gonna do some business and you can talk with anybody you know if there's a little cocktail reception at the end of the day. To find out more visit convention.bio.org Join the conversation on social media using the hashtag bio2018.